Yeah, good. Before, before three, four days, I would have to remember that you are talking about the significance of Shivaratri. Yeah, I like it. Repeating it, I have to memorize it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shivaratri is nice every month. Every, every month there is no moon. There is absence of light. The absolute no moon, and that is Shivaratri. And the next Shivaratri is Maha Shivaratri. It's the most important, whatever, Shivaratri. Even more important than any Vipam or full moon or anything. Because there is Shiva in his absolute glory of not knowing himself. In the total absence of any presence of light, Shiva is. That is the absolute absence of any presence of light. That Shiva in its absolute darkness of not knowing himself is. In his absolute glory, Shiva Shambhu. <coughs> there is a Shiva Shambhu, and not in any presence or anything. There is a, whatever you call the absolute happiness of being that what you are, no need of happiness at all. But then, by accident, what comes? New moon! Unavoidable new moon. And then it's rising until the full personality, the Shiva, is full in this full moon, and then they all drive even more crazy than ever, <laughs> when there is a driver. Then declining again, and this is like personality. If you come out of the no moon, before your baby was born, you, you, Shiva in a Shambhu state, absolute whatever, and then something gets born. Then you rise up to maybe your higher 40 years old, you become a total personality, you know exactly what you do, you make sense, you whatever, you have whatever heritage and thing, and you're in the full power of your personal life and thing, but then it's declining. Then you go to church again and pray to God and so You feel weak and blah 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 until you die. <laughs> <laughs> then you go back into the glory of absence. But what happens next? The next new moon, the new baby, <laughs> wakes up and the new thing happens. So it's the rising of the personality and then the declining of the personality. By nature, it's very natural. But all the time, or whatever, before the birth of the baby, now and when it's died, dead, you are that. You are never, never. You are in the presence of that rising personality and full moon, psychotic tralala trauma of anything. And then going back again and being so, afraid. So, so you are telling that every day is Shivaratri or no, no, not a single day is Shivaratri, right? No, every night is Shivaratri. Yeah. But in the moon, it's a, te it's a teaching of it. That you see it, the moon gets full and then no moon again and then. Then you may experience even the no moons and no energy experience. It's more energetic than the energy experience. Yeah, that is again in the phase of third dimension. Yep. But, uh, that is, but we are, <coughs> are taking the pathless path and this, uh, the stateless state. So there is no. The moon statelessness. Energy. The statelessness. Not the states, not the No, it's a statelessness. Right? State or no state, and then the Shiva point is statelessness. Neither state or no state. Stays neither moon or no moon. That is Shiva. But in no moon, it's comfortable. The experience of total comfort. No moon. And then the experience of discomfort. Moon. And when there's a moon, Shiva becomes a lunatic. <laughs> That's called lunatic. Shiva is a Jiva is a lunatic, believing that he needs to make sense that there's life and all that lunatic ideas. And then of, in the absence, ah, comfort, comfort, absence of any sensation. And then sensation again, lunatic. But all the time, that what is Shiva is Shiva. And then becomes a seeker, a hunter for himself in the presence, until he sees Presence, absence, no difference. Absolute indifference of presence and absence. But he cannot avoid it. So one maybe realizes it, or in one case, whatever scenario, Rama, it happens. But what all about other jivas, where Shiva is experiencing them with Shiva, so even 
it's never ending. Because there may be infinite sages and singers and realized ones, but nothing ever happens by that. It's not stopping anything. Shiva again has to realize itself as Jiva, in spite of all the realized yanis and whatever, rishis and whatever thing. Never stops. In spite of Buddha, in spite of Jesus, in spite of all the famous ones, it goes on and on and on. Hmm? Did it ever stop? That what never started. Hmm? So you have to be what you are <laughs> in the never ending story of yourself. That what never started, which will never end. So the main question is are, ready, are you ready to stay as what you are? And not losing that I am already what I am as a little exit. Is there any exit? No exit. There are many doors and many say exit. And then you go through the door and that's just the next moment. Many exit, many entrances and exits. But in the entrance there is no entrance, in the exit there is no exit. In birth there is no birth, in death there is no death, blah 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 blah. So as you write, every night you experience yourself in Shiva Ratri, in the absence of a person. There is Shiva in the absence of Jiva. Every night he, bec he is Sh Shiva, but even now as Jiva he is Shiva. That's the whole thing. It doesn't have to change. Shiva is never sh changing his nature. The nature of the Jiva is the nature of Shiva. The nature is not different. So what is that? What needs to be changed? What would be better? What is an advantage? If you are as a person, as absolute, as a no person, as you are as enlightened one, as what you are, an absolute unenlightened one, an absolute enlightened one, but not less and more absolute, come on. That is Ramana, be as you are, be absolute, be quiet, be complete, be complete in the experience of incompleteness and be complete in the experience of completeness. That what needs to be only, can only be complete in the com experience of completeness, is not complete. You are complete in, in and not. You cannot not be complete. 